Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome. So today I have my October, I think it's October, Illumicrate and Afterlight boxes. And we're gonna open them together. I have, I feel like I've been waiting forever for these to arrive. So I'm super excited, especially for the Afterlight book because I have a, I don't know, I have a feeling that it's gonna look super cute. I will admit that the Illumicrate box mostly got it for one specific item in the box. I'm pretty sure it's this one or maybe it's the November one. I actually cannot remember. Also, disclaimer, I'm running on like three, two, between two and a half and three hours of sleep today, so excuse me if I look tired and a little bit unfocused. <laughs> But I didn't want to wait because I don't, I'm not home tomorrow, I'm not home Sunday, so I wanted to record this today. And um, otherwise, I'm gonna walk around the next two days and just be like, what does the book look like? So, I will be leaving links to Illumicrate and Astrolite in the description box down below so you can check them out on Instagram and also their website. With that said, we should get into this box. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. like. What is the weight of this? 1.175, which is not a whole lot. Definitely no ceramics. Oh, that means it's the November box that I'm super excited for. Well, one item in the box. I cannot remember a single thing about this one. Not a single thing. So we'll see. I will also say I'm a bit on the fence about Illumicrate's picks. I don't know. I feel like I've just kind of moved away from their picks a little bit or they've maybe evolved, moved away from me. I still like Afterlight now and then, but the Illumicrate box, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Oh, right. It's that one. So we have our box. It looks like this. The theme is colors, colors of magic and beautiful colors, beautiful, beautiful colors. Oof. Okay, what do we have? Oh, these are cute. We got travel bottles, which is great. I had some fourth wing ones and then I accidentally dropped one of them and it broke, <laughs> which, which sucks by the way. These are cute though. So we have, these are travel box, bo bottles, not boxes. There's like little, can you see, ugh, is the camera gonna focus? There's, ignoring the nail polish, I know, but there's honeybees and honeys, whatever, flowers and something else. Super cute and I think it's, oh, they're different. They're all four different. These are totally giving cottage core. Okay, two of them are kind of the same. Although this one has, is that a potato? <laughs> <laughs> is it a potato or is it a lemon? <laughs> like, could go either way. We do have some bees on here though, but like, what is, what is that? Is that a potato or is it a lemon? What do you think? Let me know. This one has flowers, more flowers, some honey as well, I wonder. Oh, is this inspired by the honey witch? And lastly, the potato is back slash slash lemon i mean in this instance it could be one of each you know it could be both a potato and a lemon see this is my sleep depri deprived mind just being like potato lemon and we're just gonna like fixate on that and also the case looks super cute as well i love the little bees huge fan of the little bees i just hope that these this like the sticker or is the sticker i hope it doesn't fall off in the water because that would not make sense <laughs> It says lavender and honey. Yeah, that makes sense. Lavender and honey travel bottle kit designed by Smuck Computer. And it says this travel bottle kit inspired by the honey witch is perfect for all your travels. Yes, I do love travel bottles. I do. We're gonna place this up here. I feel like I'm missing an item. Wasn't there usually, did I move you? I'm confused, I don't know. <laughs> okay, next up we have washi tape. I do have another three rolls, I think. I don't use washi tapes, washi tape generally, but it's nice to have if I ever choose to use it because I do journal. These are green and golden, which is a nice color combination if only the camera would stop focusing on my face. And there's like a little bit of like a pattern here. This is, this is like a skull and a knife. And then lastly, it's a little bit dark. What is it? Plantsy, I think. Oh. There's a, there's a temple on there as well. I wonder what these are inspired by. I actually, I feel like I've read this book, but I can't tell. I don't know. Oi. <laughs> it says, watch out what I'm doing with my finger. I was about to do like this, but that would be rude. 
It says Alluring God's Washi Tape Set, done by Julie Sophie Art, or Julie Sophie Art. Decorate your journals with a stunning set of washi tapes featuring elements from Gods of Jade and Shadow. Have not read that book. I actually don't own it. I think I've been close to buying it a couple of times and then I just haven't. I also think the other washi tapes that we have are inspired by Strange the Dreamer, possibly, which is why I can't get myself to use them because once they're gone, they're gone. You're never gonna get them back. Next up, we have a Moth to a Flame chain pin set inspired by the Crimson Moth. This is what it looks like. Okay. Chain pin set. It's been a while since we've gotten any pins. I did love the Crimson Moth, I will say. So we have flower and then a moth over here, which is crimson and a little chain in between so they you know fit together designed by Stacey McAvoy Kant that's a very pretty rose is the rose a symbol in the book I cannot remember for the life of me the moth obviously although there there are no moths it's just her name <laughs> but <laughs> a moth to a flame is the rose supposed to be a flame anyway designed by St Stacey McAvoy Kant show your support for the crimson moth with this chain enamel pin set is the rose symbol in that book? I cannot remember. Anyway, it's cute. It's cute. I'm gonna put it on one of my banners. I have a couple of them by now. <laughs> We're gonna put this right here. We're gonna cover... It's gonna stand right next to... I wanna say Will, but it's probably not his name. I remember Jit. Oh, it is Will. Oh my god. Is your name Will? Why? I've... I'm so, I am so tired. Tessa, Jim, and Will, thank you. Oh my god, I just needed, I just needed a confirmation, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna put the pin next to Will, right there. Pretty, and then we have, is this orange of the, orange of the Priory Tree? What is wrong with me? <laughs> Priory of the Orange Tree. <laughs> Priory of the Orange Tree. Is that the name of the book? I need sleep. <laughs> anyway, so we have a book jacket designed by Paul Hami. These usually are, and although I don't use them a whole lot, I love these. So, so good. I'm pretty sure this is Priory of the Orange Tree, which, because there's an orange tree and a, and a bad dragon and a good dragon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. These are bad evil dragons. They have wings. Technically, the worms because they don't have wings, they're called worms, still dragons, but worms with a, with a Y, and they're the good dragons in uh, Priory, or Roots of Chaos. The Balance of Magic book jacket, designed by Pauhami. Treat your books like royalty with our next book jacket, inspired by the Priory of the Orange Tree. They just have to include an orange tree, and I'm like, yep, that is Priory. I love this. I love Priory of the Orange Tree as well. Ugh. It's such a good book. Such a good book. I'm so happy that I have stunning copies of that book. Anyway, I kind of don't want to put it like this because then we get evil dragon and we want to see cute good dragon but then we can't see the orange tree. <laughs> anyway, and now it's time for the book. The first one of them. And I see a bit of a color change but like it's in a... I'm gonna take it out of this. Ooh. This is a very interesting color combination. Kind of reminds me of Poison somehow. My book is a little bit bumped. A tiny bit, but it's nothing major. So we have Until We Shatter by Kate Dillon, who I believe wrote... Is it Mindwalker? Mindwalker. Ow. <laughs> I believe the original is more like... Ooh, I think purple... It's a lot like this color combination. So purple blue. I'll put a picture of it up here. So you can kind of compare the two. This is like purple green. Very brave color combination, but they do work together. What do you associate with that, with that color combination? Because for me, I associate it with like witches and poison. I don't know why. What about you though? <laughs> so color combinations what, or like um, exclusive color way, I think is what they call it. We also have digitally sprayed edges that are purple and green as well. It's Hotterscape, so I think they might have been taken from somewhere on the cover, but I can't actually tell where. Usually Hotterscape takes like a little sliver from the cover and puts it on the edges, but I just cannot tell where that should be. And then we have a whole lot of characters on the end pages. Ooh, okay. We have some art on the naked cover with foil as well. The naked cover is purple. 
The spine looks like this, no title, but does have a building on it. <laughs> and on the back as well, another building. This looks like nighttime. Is it the back of the building then? We have the front of the building and during daytime, back of the building during nighttime, I think. Yeah. I've seen that tower before. That tower looks familiar. The end pages. This is a nice line. I like this. Uh, um, in Danish, you would say a nice line. Like, I, I don't know how to... Yeah. <laughs> Drawing language. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but I do like it. It's a little bit cartoony, but I think this book is also YA, so it fits with it. And then in the back, ooh, pretty. A very pretty. A bit of a contrast with a very blurry background, and then the very clear, clear lines here on the characters, but interesting, very interesting. They're cute though. A desperate thief, an impossible heist, survive or shatter. All right. That is such a, a very cool author picture, by the way. <laughs> She's sitting with a phone, looking shocked. Anywho, no matter where she goes, Kemi? C-E-M-M-Y. I want to go with Kemi, but like, I don't know. Uh, his life is under threat. The church would see her killed for having any magic. The Council of Shades wants her dead for not having enough. So when her mother falls ill, Kemi has no choice but to turn thief. And when she's offered a job that could solve all their problems, it's impossible to resist. The catch. Kemi will have to work with Chase, beautiful, dangerous, and full of secrets. To steal a powerful relic, the church is hidden within a deadly realm of shadows. If she succeeds, Kimmy will finally be safe. But if she's caught, she risks igniting a spark that could destroy the city and everyone inside. Okay, so an action-packed epic heist fantasy from the author of Mindwalker. I literally could just have read the inside of the dust jacket instead of turn. It's fine. Perfect friends of Six of Crows. We got a little bit of a heist. Um, uh, Master of One, I've not read that, and Bone Crier's Dawn, I've not read that either. I have name but a clue. She pretty though. Is she signed? As well? Ooh, she signed in purple! I love when authors do that. When they match their signature with the book, it makes me so happy. <laughs> I don't know, like, isn't that just satisfying? It's purple. And then you open, and the signature is purple. <laughs> they should do that all the time. I wonder how many pins she's gone through. Also, there is a letter, by the way. Um, a rather longish letter. I want a messy bi girls and pretty lying boys and a dysfunctional found family who always makes the worst decisions. Then I wanted to give them a bunch of rainbow magics and see what happens when they're backed into a corner. <laughs> Typical author talk. <laughs> anyway, pretty cool. What do we have as for artists? Oh, all the artists are linked in the description box, by the way, as well. I always do that, so. Our Limicrate exclusive edition is a royal hardback and features a trade cover variant with foil. There is foil on it. Nice. If you can see a little bit if the light catches it. Yep. Full color design on the case with foil on the front and spine. The artwork is done by The Creeping Moon. Design is done by Chatty Nora. The edges are from the publisher and art. No. And paper artwork is done by Drea D Art. Drea dot D dot Art. And they're different in the front and in the back. There's a bound in letter and it's also hand signed by the author. It's cute. I, nope. We cannot put her there. So I'm gonna move a few things around because we also have to make room for the cute afterlight book that we are opening right now. So let's get to it. This is gonna be cute, it's gonna be magical, it's a contemporary fantasy or like a contemporary romance with fantasy elements I should say. Which is not the norm for Afterlight but I love those kinds of like where they're like written like contemporary romance like rom-coms but they have like a hint of romance or hint of fantasy in there. I think that's so fun. Or even just like full on fantasy, like Bride by Ali Hazelwood, which is totally written like a rom com. Okay, okay. We have I Put a Spell on You. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. She looks cute. Oh, she looks cute. Okay, okay. She looks very cute. We're gonna take her out of the bubble wrap. Ooh. She's also tall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that sounds. <laughs> She's looking cute. It's best hex ever. 
look at this. This is a redesigned cover. I cannot even remember what the original cover looks like. I'm pretty sure there are no character characters on it. I know that there's a group of people in the community that are super tired of cartoon um, or like character drawings on the front covers. I love them. I think they're so charming still. Even the cartoony ones like Icebreaker still for example. I like that cover. I want more of those covers. I think they're so boring when it's just like like few doodles and then there's just uh, a, a title on it. It doesn't, it screams more literary fiction to me, not so much contemporary romance. Also on the back, there's stuff as well. There's a little black cat down there in the corner. What are these? Ovens? Are they baking? It looks like they're baking cinnamon rolls. Also, we have beautiful edges with this pattern, this orangey, I don't know what this is. Is it like henna? Because it looks like she has on her hands. I don't know much about that kind of um like hit out tattoos and stuff so i don't know if that's actually making sense maybe it's not maybe it's just like slightly inspired by it i don't know oh this is so charming with like the little baked gooks gooks goods <laughs> as well i don't know what that was what else do we have oh she's so cute okay kitchen witch recipe book property of dina dina whitlock dina i'm gonna call her dina best text ever and then rosewater essence and lemon zest, a spell to warm up your fingers and toes after spending too long in the cold. So the book itself is dressed up like a book, <laughs> which is super cute. I love when they do that and it's like a hint to the book, the like, there's this book is probably inside the book, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it does say recipe book right here. So because we have like hot chocolate, ginger and pers pers persimmon cake. I don't know what that is. Mixing bowl. Oh, that's a charming mixing bowl. It's kind of giving like cottage core vibes a little bit actually. Or maybe just like witchy bake bakery. <laughs> yep. She is cute. A bottomless handbag. That is so handy. That is so handy. I think this is a... No, it's an actual signature. Nice! Because it bleeds through the paper a little bit, so you can tell. And it's not even on a tip bin. Um if that's what they're called, I can't remember, which means that the author has actually sat with this book and signed it, which is also pretty exciting. From Mama, when, wherever I am, I carry you with me. Aww, that's also very cute. <laughs> oh, on the bag we have the dude. An iron key, strawberry jam, Scott's tea blend, uh, some kind of pancakes, wire rimmed glasses, a book on ancient Egypt, a book on Maori, Maori, Maori traditions. British Museum ID badge and his name is Scott. Oh, because it's Scott's tea blend. I thought it was a I, I honestly did not read it. It said Scott with two T's. <laughs> I thought it meant like Scott. It's fine. What kind of tea blend? He looks cute as well, by the way. She also looks, she looks adorable. The cat's name is Heebie Jeebie. <laughs> this goes very well with the pairing, uh, which was in August, I think. They kind of have similar styles a little bit. Okay, let's read the synopsis, which is on this beautiful, like with foil as well. It's like framed up. Nice. When it comes to love, sometimes the recipe needs a little magic. Dina is a skilled kitchen witch. A kitchen witch. And cafe owner, serving magic-infused pastries to her loyal customers. But it's hard not to feel something is missing when you're cursed to hurt anyone who falls for you. Scott is a museum curator, recently back in London after a brutal breakup two years ago and is looking to make up for the time he missed. He's determined to be the perfect best man at his best friend's upcoming wedding, but his plans take an unexpected turn when he meets the bewitching maid of honor. I see. After a weekend in the countryside full of peculiar hedge mages, palm readings by candlelight, and a midnight Halloween ritual, there's no denying the chemistry between them. But there's just one problem. The hex still holds and Dina knows that Scott is in danger. Can Dina break the spell before it breaks both their hearts? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say yes. Because it is a romance after all. <laughs> she cute though. We love her. What do we have? It says, this is not a B format, by the way. <laughs> Very much not a B format. She's a royal hardback. B formats are basically like paperback sized, um, which this is not. I'm only saying because it says it's B format, but it's not. <laughs> it's a royal hardback. A fully redesigned cover done by Jaded Dot Draws, designed by Chatty Nora. Full color artwork on the case by Chatty Nora. Digital ed 
Edge, designed by Chloe.Z.Arts, and paper artwork is done by the same uh, the same artist, and they're different in the front and the back, and it's also hand signed by the author. She's cute. We love her. I'm gonna put her right there. And that's it for today's unboxing. So, am I getting two books? I think I'm getting both boxes this month as well, so we'll see when they arrive. Probably won't have them until like the start of December, but... And I'll probably save them so I can open both of them at the same time. And then next month, I think... I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I think I've skipped Afterlight, but I think I'm gonna get the uh, Fairy Loot Remain to see. I'm not sure about the adult one yet, but we'll see about it though. We'll see about it though. There will be more unboxings on the channel is my point. So if you enjoyed this one, feel free to hit the thumbs up. Let me know if you read the books, by the way. Let me know your thoughts if you want to share them. Let me know your favorite item. Mine is probably the book jacket, even though I don't use them. I just, I just really like them. Plus it's Priory of the Orange Tree, so. But yes, if you want to see more videos like this or any of the other booktube stuff, definitely consider sticking around by clicking on the subscribe button. However, that is all I got for you guys today, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!